Welcome back to Lost in Theaters, the podcast where we talk about movies that have slipped through the cracks of pop culture. My name is Rachel, and I'm here with my dear sister, Ruth. Ruth. It's just, just Ruth. With two O's? Nope. A U. A U. single U. Two U's. Nope. Sister. Just one U. That's right. And we are going to talk about Ruth this week we're going back to our roots um Uh I for a while you know when you're sifting through films and there is a bit of you know you want to find little known films films that have gone through the cracks of pop culture which means they're not easily locatable right um on the get-go when when you're on some streaming platform they're like watch these ones everyone loves these ones and you're like I I literally am looking for the ones that not everyone sees. So it's a bit, <laughs> it's, you know, it's a bit of a, you know, digging. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, we've had some pretty traumatic films this season. <laughs> I mean, nothing compares to B.U.G. in season one. I mean, that was horrible. That's true. But we had Gretel and Hansel, and... That seemed more low-key. It right? was, but Okay, it was... disclaimer, I remember very few that's of the true. things that we talk about in this <laughs> podcast, so that's also for audience information. I'm just saying <laughs> we've had some high-octane films that I've had to watch, so I was like thinking... Like C-A-N-A-B-A-L-I-S-N? Oh yes, the trauma. <laughs> the trauma of <laughs> mushrooms. It was horrid. Don't say that word anymore. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> Okay. I wanted to find something that was a little more, you know, chill. Kosher. Kosher. <laughs> a little more chill. And where better to go? Is honey kosher? No, sorry. Don't listen yes, to me. Yes, I think so. Where better to go than, you know, 60s Disney movies? So our attic? Did you dig through our attic? No. Really. Okay. <laughs> Disney Plus. The but children's library? No. Okay. Disney Plus has all of their back catalog of films and one of the films that when you search through and, and even when they're like do you want to rewatch an old classic uh one of the movies that doesn't really show up on those lists is apple dumpling game no that one that one's a classic oh, okay. <laughs> just <laughs> is the computer wore tennis shoes can you repeat that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i read it like 12 times the computer wore tennis shoes. War. Yeah. Not war. Yeah. War. War. As, as in, in, like, put on to wear. Yeah, he as in wore a sweater, or he wore... Not war. Shoes. Yeah. As in, like, went to war. <laughs> the computer wore tennis shoes. Because that's how I heard it. <laughs> a war... The computer wore wait, 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 wait. tennis shoes. A war shoes. between computers and tennis shoes. Can you imagine that showdown? That is what I imagine. I am imagining it. It's amazing. Oh my goodness. And it's just the computer and the- anyways. The okay. computer is wearing tennis shoes in the past, yes? That's what the sentence is? No. Yes, yes. What? Yes, yes it is. <laughs> what do you I'm mean sorry. no? I'm sorry, I was still envisioning, like, a computer, but no. No, no, no. It's a- What? Well, think it, of it- You said like, the computer. How does a computer wear tennis shoes, Ruth? We'll just think it's about- an android? Kinda, yeah. Okay. I don't know, you super glued them to the bottom? Yeah, well, they, they will learn throughout the episode how the computer... Robot. Okay, so I, <laughs> the reason I had to read it like 12 times was I just expected a who to be somewhere between computer and war. The computer who wore tennis shoes, you know? But there mm-hmm. wasn't. And I was wondering where the title came from. This <laughs> one comes solely from... Uh, the song at the introduction of the movie, I'm like pouring the tea, credits. By the way. Oh yeah, Ruth has tea, and <laughs> I will have tea later. Um, the introduction to the credits. There's a song. And it goes. The computer wore tennis shoes and a twinkle in his eye, and it goes on from there. Poor computer. <laughs> You'll see. It's gonna be fine. It's so, gonna be fine. She says. Um, so it's from the song at the beginning. It's pr- a pretty intense song. Anyways, <laughs> um, so this movie, The Computer Wore Tennis Shoes, ha- it, it, okay, so I also watched some time ago a Disney film called uh, The Ugly Dash Hound. Um, Did we review that? No. Because Wasn't it too short? No, it was, 
plot twist. Non sequitur. It was, no, but I just kept expecting things to tie in. I should, we should talk about it at some point in the, maybe, but we can talk, well, okay, so the, uh, the Ugly Dash now, Hound now we are talking had about many it. plot points in it, okay, um, but none of them connected at all. Uh, but it felt like an old Disney movie, you know, where yeah. where it feels, it has that, that classic figure who from, like, um, what's his name? Like, he's in... I mean, that darn cat again. And mm-hmm. um, I think he might be in Herbie. Anyways. Um, yes. The one with the firehouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the little old lady. Mm-hmm. And Herbie's like, don't knock down my firehouse. Exactly. That's the guy. So his vibe, the, the, the old Disney vibe, is present in this one, but it has more plot. It has less plot than that darn cat, but more plot than the ugly dash out. Sorry, my face went completely you slack. You did, and you just utterly didn't respond at all. <laughs> I'm really sleepy. What am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> it, additionally, it stars Kurt Russell. Is he? He's a oh, famous wait, actor. Wait, 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 wait. Is he the guy who actually has his own band and did sing in Les Mis? No, that's Russell Crowe. I think. <laughs> I was so close. Yeah, Not you close were close. At all. No, Kurt Russell plays Ego the Living Planet. In what? Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I haven't seen the first one or what? the second one. What? No, you have. Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, I was thinking Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yes. <laughs> There's too many galaxies. Okay, so he's a famous... Oh, he's also Knight Rider. That's who it is. I was trying to remember why it was such a big deal that Knight he was Rider. in Guardians of the Galaxy. It's where the car talks to the man. Oh. Knight Rider. Oh, yeah, I know about this. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know about this. So, uh-huh. Kurt Russell plays the lead uh, young man in I this. still can't envision this guy. I know. I didn't recognize him at all. <laughs> I just, I just, for some reason, his face didn't stick with me. Additionally, the villain in this movie is played by a man named Cesar Romero. Are you ready for this? I was not prepared okay. for this insight. Okay. I, when I looked him up and I saw his picture, my brain was like, I've seen this man before. Because he's old in this movie. Uh-huh. Um, but it was a young picture of him. I was like, where have I seen him? He's Chris Jorgensen from The Thin Man. Wait, what? <gasps> I know! That was his second movie ever. The Thin Man comes out in 1934. Chris Jorgensen is played by Cesar Romero, but he also plays the villain in this movie. Chris Jorgensen. He's the one who, um, the lady Did isn't you ever married think to. That Chris could work. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the one who's like doesn't work and goes off to his bedroom. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Exactly. He also plays the Joker in the 1966 Adam West Batman. Dude. This man's career is baller. Can I just say that? I, oh, I'm really proud of he him. He knows how to pick him. He does. <laughs> he does. It's great. Except for this movie. Well, this movie was good. <laughs> I I enjoyed this movie. It as someone I'm who appreciates kidding. old Disney movies, I found this pleasant. And okay. so you know that's who this movie is for, Ruth. It's for someone who just wants just wants a chill a chill movie to watch. Probably. I mean, you could watch it with other people, but I it was enjoyable to watch by myself. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like I wanted to mock the film the whole time kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> um, yes. So that's this movie. Uh, thoughts, questions, concerns, comments from the peanut gallery. Should we have a rating at this point? Oh, oh good. Oh, it's, it's like G, <laughs> maybe PG, but I really can't think of anything that would make it. PG. You said that before and then revealed that we're talking about C. Oh my gosh! N A P. Okay. Okay. I S N. Uh, no, no, no. There's nothing quite like that. Um, I can't imagine someone having a crisis. There's in the no cuss this. words. There's oh, no, no drugs or alcohol. No. There's no. Oh, there is gambling. It's, it's a pleasant film, a chill and pleasant film. Um, we Chillings. still, any, any more thoughts, questions, concerns, comments? Um, so we know who it's for, uh-huh. and infants could watch it, uh-huh. and also regular adults could watch it mm-hmm. happily. Mm-hmm. Um, any special effects that will be especially alarming to our modern viewers? <laughs> oh 
only that it's set in the 60s, and therefore... Should we characterize the 60s for our younger listeners? Um... By the younger, li- younger listener, help me. <laughs> okay, so it's sort of like the whole film doesn't make sense if you don't know the f- if you didn't understand that technology today doesn't work back then. Technology back then doesn't work like it does today. You Any know? more specific qualifiers? Well, because it concerns computers. Oh, okay. In the sixties. Okay. <laughs> so Noted. all the technology actually looks. Like the Star Wars Death Star scene oh, really? from nineteen seventy seven. Okay. Um, the way the lights work and the like yeah. setup, like that's the vibe. And I can imagine if you were a young person watching this, you might be shocked. <laughs> Period. Period. <laughs> just shocked. You might just be shocked uh, if you'd never encountered it before. But it's kind of it's fun. You Electrocution. Know? Yeah. Really comes at you. Wait till you hear about it. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Uh, medium spoiler section. Yeah. Okay. Um. Medium Are you spoiler okay section. When you hit your chest like oh that? yeah, definitely. <laughs> I practice as a young child because I wanted to be able to beat my chest. Like so Tarzan or what? I wanted to be. I don't know. It was an intimidation tactic. I thought it was an intimidation tactic, and I was like. Well, if I want to be able to intimidate people, I should be able to beat my chest. I think you were correct. So I uh, learned how to beat my clavicle. Ow. It's pretty great. <laughs> Anyways. I'm glad you're okay. So, uh, me too. <laughs> so the premise of the film is that a computer ends up inside the head of a boy. It's actually a college student, technically. Um, yeah, a college student ends up with a computer in his head and gets really smart. But the computer is also used for nefarious purposes, like rigging games huh. um, to make unlawful income. Uh-huh. And so he's in that danger. Darn in unlawful in income. <laughs> that darn unlawful in income. Yeah, so he's in danger. Uh, and it's sort of the playing out of those events. So the computer's trying to escape. No. Nope. Dang it. The computer is the boy. Young man. Concern. Is the young man. Do I understand? No. Let's move mm-hmm. on. <laughs> well, it is confusing, because usually when you think computer inside of a person, uh-huh. what do you think, Ruth? Um, microchip. Yeah, right? That is not the vibe of this one. I don't even know. It's... <laughs> I was, this is something that I, I watched how they did the computer inside the uh-huh. person, and I thought, well, that's creative license. I mean, <laughs> I mean it just, we're just so realistic yeah. these days. Uh-huh. Like, it must, like, incorporate itself into his nervous system, and it'll be like blood, but little electrons. No. The doctor looks into his eyes and sees the blinking dashboard that okay. used to be outside <laughs> of the computer, <laughs> and now it's the blinking dashboard is inside of him. Okay. Computer. So is the boy himself? Yes. Just plus a computer? Yes. He's, yeah, himself plus the, like, reasoning and intellect of a computer. I have philosophical, theological problems with this. Yes. But we should continue. Yes. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I was willing to just let the lawnmower go. Yeah, it's fine. What? (laughs) (laughs) That was an interesting analogy. What do you want to reveal to me? Nothing. Okay. Okay. Um, Nothing. It's fine. Nothing. It's fine. (laughs) Nothing. It's fine, Ruth. Uh huh. Uh, yes. Okay. Major spoilers. Let's go. All right. So, opening scene is uh, there's professors talking around a table. And one of them is like, we should get a computer because it's the modern age and the kids need to know how to use the incoming technology. And the other guy's like, get a computer, they said. Put it in the kid's head, they we said. didn't put it in the, the kid's, kids head. The kids will love it, they said. <laughs> but the dean who's in charge is like, we don't have the budget. Besides, kids don't need. We don't have the budget for that. Just combine them, they said. <laughs> no, this is what happens, Ruth. <laughs> So, he says, we don't have the budget. Um, No kidding. And they're debating it, and he's like, but City College has a computer. We're going to lose students to City College if we don't get a single computer. We'll just make our own students. Oh, my Lando. (laughs) 
<laughs> so while they're having this conversation, the camera zooms in on the flowers, and there's like an antenna in the flowers. But the ante- the antenna belongs to, connects to a walkie-talkie that a boy is holding as he's going down the the <laughs> nice. road. And he's listening to the whole conversation, and he sits down in a courtyard thing, uh-huh. and, and it turns on the thing, and every and so everyone's listening, the students. There's a large oh, portion of the really? student body listening to the conversation about the budget that they're having. Dang. And then they're, they're like, well, now we have to get to the next thing on the uh, agenda, the dead wood. And then um, they, they need to be expelled. And then hmm? uh, the guy who wanted the computer, his name uh, is Dr. Quigley. Or Mr. Quigley, and he's like, well, we know that the not-so-gifted students need as much help as the gifted students. What? I don't know where this conversation came from, but it was surreal to listen to. And they're like, no, we have to put these kids on probation. The (laughs) not-so-gifted students? I know! They start listing names, okay, of people who are gonna get, kids who are gonna get, like, kicked out. And meanwhile, outside are all of the people listening. Oh my gosh! They are so chill about this. It's surreal. Dang. <laughs> it's so funny because they're one of them's like, man, I didn't make it. It's like I, <laughs> I missed it, and I was like, it's okay, Jim. You know, and they're like, all right, you know. And so then the kids are all sitting at the table, you know, talking, uh, still, and they're like, if only there was something we could do for Mister Quigley. He's always standing up for us, you know. And Aww. I wish we could get him a computer. Oh no. They're like, yeah, we could do that. So like, what are we gonna do? And then one student. This kid's name is Dexter. He's like, I used to work at uh, at the guy who has who, who would donate the computer's office as a janitor. No collect connection to Dexter's lab. Correct, none. Um, he's like, uh, I have a connection. We should just go ask him to donate the computer. People donate things to to universities all the time. It's true. And they're like, you're a but you're a you are a janitor man. You think that's gonna get you quiet? <laughs> um, sure enough, it does. Uh, and the very next scene, they're in his office. (laughs) Uh, and he's like, I would love to give a computer, but I already give $20,000 a year, and it's another $10,000, so I don't think I can, you know, give the money. Uh, this guy's name is Arno. Um, and the kids are like, okay, we understand, it's no problem, thanks for listening to us. He's like, I like this delegation of kids, it's kind of fun. He's like, and he's pause for a second, and he's like, actually... I think I have an idea. And he says, okay, you guys all leave and I'll work on it. So he shoes all the kids out. And then he goes through the secret, he has a secret door in his office. And And he goes into his secret lair. And, uh, there are- Secret tunnel! Kind of. But Ruth, there are literal baskets of money. What? Picnic baskets. (laughs) Wicker baskets. What? Of money in this room that people are like sifting through. What? (laughs) I loved it so much. (laughs) And so he's sifting through these literal baskets of money, uh, or other people, and he goes to the end, and there's a computer at the end of the room. Is there an explanation for this at any point? Yeah, because he's, it's dirty money is the effect, right? Like, that's the mm-hmm. idea, is he's getting this money, he goes to the end of the room, and the computer starts sort of spouting these weird words, it's, you know, um, Applejack, 24, uh, this numbers, and then he's, like, squid. This makes me think of Terry Pratchett and the computer that the the, the unseen, unseen academicals. academicals have. Yes, it's kind of like that. <laughs> um, so they have just this, and, it, and then there's a conversation between Arno and one of his stench, and henchmen. I was going to say stooge. Stenchmen? I was going to say stooge, stooge and then I went with henchmen, and I switched, so it sounded like stenchmen. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, but he he's like... Uh, so this is, they, their conversation reveals that this is their way they're, they're making their money, and it has to do with betting and stuff. Okay. Uh, and it's probably not great. Um, and then he's like, okay. okay, he says, put this money on whatever the games are, these things, and then he's like, oh, and also, take $20,000, don't, don't send the check to the college for $20,000 this time. He's like, okay. He's like, wouldn't that would look bad? And he's like, don't question me. Okay. <laughs> so the next scene is the computer being brought into... This is the janitor still, right? Like, this is a janitor that was, like, leading all of this? So, like, the lab or what? No. So the kid was a janitor for these people. Yes, but he's... But we don't really understand who these people are. These people are just people with money. Donors. Just donors. 
And they're like, got they have some with business. their baskets of money. <laughs> secret, <laughs> secret baskets of money. Is this like some superintendent's like dream vengeance project or like what? <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, so cut back to the university or the college, and they're bringing in the Which computer. Isn't? It's a college, <laughs> and they're bringing in a computer, and. This roof is a Hidden Figures computer. You remember Hidden Figures? Yeah. Yeah. So, they have the students bringing it in. These are strapping young men. And they <laughs> just keep coming in with parts of the computer. And they're, like, sweating. <laughs> and, you know, right? it's like, one huge tower of something. Yeah. Second huge tower uh-huh. of something. And I say this because, again, people will be confused if they think of modern-day computers. Yeah. No, it's just... It's a room, effectively. Yeah. They fill a room with the technology that is a computer. So the next day at class, um, Mr. Quigley is explaining how to do use a computer. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, it's like the human brain in almost every way. Oh, no. We're going to show you how it can replace human beings. Any computer scientist is <laughs> rolling their eyes so hard right now. <laughs> so... Uh, they use, he uses, like, fake water, te- he uses fake rain to simulate rain on the sensor so that it makes the door close and order groceries, the phone order groceries, it's a whole thing. And he's like, and you would have forgotten it, but, but the computer didn't. What? <laughs> <laughs> then he's like, the computers also have infallible memory. Okay. There's a tape in the computer that has a flight path from a spaceship to... Uh, Mercury from 20 years ago. It's about to recall it perfectly. And I would like to add that I don't think that that's how that just didn't no. feel like memory. To that's me. not how computers work. Now, on top of that, when I recall something, <laughs> I feel like there isn't a tape in my head. No. That has exactly copied it. No. Memory and co- computer. It was the first time I ever thought that computer memory and hu- human memory are just like not the same. Yeah. At all. Yeah. It was very weird. Anyway, so, um, but instead of recalling what it was supposed to recall, it goes haywire and the door slams a bunch oh, no. of stuff, you know. <laughs> okay. It's like, oh, well, whatever. So, end of class, Dean Higgin- Higgins comes on the loudspeaker and he's like, all right, everybody, uh, tomorrow is the classification test, so make sure you're here. We finished 43rd last time, and someone was like, hey, isn't there only, like, 44 colleges who take this? <laughs> You know, I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> so Dexter goes up to the professor, and he's like, so what's wrong with the computer? And he's like, oh, well, this piece malfunctioned. I have to get a new one, or, you know, bad things will happen. He's like, well, I could go get it. And he's like, shouldn't you study for that exam? And he's like, nah, it'll be okay. I'll get it. Dexter's so, doomed. So Dexter goes to get the part. And Dexter is doomed. Ruth, Sorry. This kid still wanted to study. Um, and it's the greatest in-car studying thing I've ever seen in my life. Wait, He's, like, steering the car with his elbow, the book is on the wheel, and he has literally taped notes to his window. Oh. This is so inadvisable. <laughs> and it's raining, okay? And dark. <laughs> I was like, devotion? But no! <laughs> this is not a good idea. Um, and he has the part beside him. So he got the part, and he's coming back, and... Uh, but you can tell by how he's studying that it's it's not going well. It's like, three Aww. A's in a row? No, there's no way you'd pick three A's in a row, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, and he gets it wrong or whatever. Um, so he gets back. He puts the thing in the uh, computer. The he puts the p- part in the computer. and um, But for some reason, the window's open or something, so the ground is covered in water. And he happens to stand in the water, and he's holding two wires, and he gets electrocuted. Of ah! course. Um, and the machine goes dark, and then he runs away. And, uh, that night, he gets home late, and he's going to sleep, and he starts just saying things in his sleep. Yeah. And I think it's his brother. I realize now that it's his brother the whole time. What? Wow. This is a recurring character. What? (laughs) (laughs) So he leans over, and he's like, hey, Dex, are you alright? He's like, oh yeah, I'm fine. He's like, you were beeping. (laughs) And he is, he's beeping. He's going, meep. Um, but it doesn't, his mouth doesn't move when he beeps. He just beeps. <laughs> I don't understand. He just does that, it's fine. He just beeps. Now, he says, you mean, uh, burp? And he says, no, beep. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
so the next day there's the test uh, and he's like, you have to, the professor says, you have to finish it, and you, if you can't answer it, just move on to the next question, because it's a speed test. Yeah. So answer as much as you can. So they go, and Dexter's like, ah, whatever, and then he looks down and starts answering questions. Mm-hmm. And it's the most intense answering. <laughs> he just, he starts checking things. Yeah. He finishes. And, like, the professor is shocked. Yeah. Everyone's shocked. He tries to go about eating his lunch, uh-huh. uh, but it's in a brown bag, of course. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's kind of loud. So that doesn't work. Next scene, they're at the doctor. Uh, because the professor has said the university, this is irregular. Something is wrong with Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> um, he had explained what happened the night before. So they take him to the doctor, and uh, the dean is there. The dean is like, what's up? I don't think this is a good use of money. And he says, no, you should, we should check him out. So they look inside his brain, and this is when you see the literal buttons, yeah. Death Star buttons, uh-huh. were in his head. They're like, what is going on in your head, dude? And he's like, I, I, I'm sorry. So the dean, then next scene, they're like, oh no. So he then he goes in front of a panel of people who are going to like, question him to see how smart he is. Yeah. Uh, and Sounds his friends reasonable. his friends are Sherman. They're like, you're, 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 you're smart. Fine. You're gonna be fine. So he gets up there and uh, the first professor, he asks two really hard math questions. He gets them both right. And then uh, they gonna, they're gonna ask him a third one, but he says, hang on. You've asked me three of these questions already. Shouldn't we move on to the next one? And in the course of ten minutes, his friends identify his character change, and one of them turns to the other one and goes, I prefer the old Dexter. Oh my gosh! <laughs> it was so fast! I mean, they're right that he's his character, he starts to get sort of, sort of full of himself, but it was so fast! His, old, his friends were so fast to be like, he's changed. In the course of an, like, the beginning yeah. of an interview. Anyways... So then we get snapshots of Dexter's life as he continues. It's like 24 hours, 48 hours or something. He gets a pinstripe suit. It's a literal ticker, ticker tape parade. What? Who gets, you know, World War II veterans get a ticker tape parade. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Yeah. They're going a little overboard. I'm okay, using myself. <laughs> so his friends think, you know, they keep, they watch him on TV and they think he's changed. And um, meanwhile, the dean says, you know, we're gonna make some, this is amazing, it's so great, we're, and then the encyclopedia people show up, so apparently, encyclopedia people? Yeah, so apparently, there's this competition held by the encyclopedia people, where it's like a trivia competition, Mm -hmm. and the trick is to, whoever can answer the most questions correctly, it's a university competition, so you've got like a team of people who compete, you get $10,000. $10,000. Okay. Or maybe it's $100,000. It's a lot of money. You get a lot of money for winning. And the dean says, awesome, we'll have Dexter on our team, and we have, we'll have it in the bag, you know? Meanwhile, Dexter's at the UN. What? Because he can learn languages very quickly. Okay. And, uh, they're, they're like, he's gonna be the smartest member to be in the world. Um, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. Uh, meanwhile, the state college, uh, is conspiring to poach Dexter you know, how do we... Dexter poaching. Dexter poaching, exactly. It's like, we're gonna, we're gonna give him everything he needs to be successful over here. We're gonna figure it out. We're gonna get him here. Um, then, while Dexter is watching a rocket launch, uh, Mr. Arno phones him and says, you know, Dexter, we're gonna have a meeting when you come back. Does that sound good? He's like, yeah, it's whatever. It's okay. Yeah. So he does. Uh, he gets home. He brushes off his friends, the jerk, Aww. and his former college, and heads right to Mr. Arno, who's at a racetrack, and of course, Dexter can predict the numbers perfectly. Yeah. Arno makes tons of money, and then he says, okay, hey, uh, he says to his henchman, his stooge, <laughs> um, take him to, you know, mal- Malarkey's or something. So they go. I and don't think so his name is Malarkey. Arnie, Arno goes one way, and Dexter and his henchman and, and Arno's henchman go to this place. Well, the the dean of the college, both colleges, mm-hmm. ha- are following him at this point <laughs> to try and get him to sign uh, yeah. the document. So they both follow him, and they all show up. And it turns out, you know, when I saw this scene, I was a little confused because it looked like a normal house. Not, not it was a fancy house, but a normal. It wasn't. Uh, like a bar or something. I thought they were yeah. going to go to a pizza place or a bar. Um, so 
So they show up at this house. A pizza place? Because he said they had good pizza. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yes. So they, um, uh, Dexter goes in, so do the deans, they follow him in, uh, and they sort of lose track of Dexter in the crowd, and they're looking through these curtains, and they start arguing about when who's going where, um, and then the cops show up. Okay. Blowing a cop whistle, and they're like, and then a lady who's at one of the crap tables, because inside of the house is a gambling. Did I say this already? Uh, no. Okay, the house is a gambling place with full on slot machines and tables <laughs> and stuff. And again, my brain was like, this kind of looks like a normal house. Then the cops show up, and a lady at one of the crap tables goes, It's a raid! And everyone, <laughs> they don't run, they just sort of walk speedily away. As, and the guy at the front, the cop who just busted in and says, all the entrances are blocked. This is a raid. You will be. <laughs> like, he's just droning on about how they're, you know, gonna get everybody here. Yeah. And then it struck me that you aren't allowed to just have gambling wherever. That's correct. Yeah. So this could still happen today. Yes. And in my brain, I thought it was unique to the 60s. <laughs> or the late 60s to the 69. But no, it's a thing, apparently. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, they the, both the deans get arrested. <laughs> um, oh my gosh! And so does uh, Dexter and the other and the henchman. So in jail, the deans are still arguing. Um, Dexter's sad, and yeah. the henchman says, "You know what's the matter? You know you, you and me we could stick together." And he says, "Don't you think that everyone's just out for himself? You know he's starting to have big thoughts." <laughs> um, and the henchman says, you know, you just you just go with the flow, kid. Um, <laughs> then Dexter gets bailed out. And uh, the henchman says, oh, it's Mr. Arno. And he says, don't let, don't let him forget me. He'll get me too, right? And Dexter's like, I'll be sure to remind him. So he gets to the door, and he opens the door, and Root, my heart was so filled with joy. <laughs> it wasn't Mr. Arno. It was the very large pack of Dexter's friends Aww. all standing at the counter like with dollar bills. They have like change. They're like pushing it onto the police. There's at least twelve of them. Okay? And the the cop is counting out the money and he says, You've only got ninety-eight seventy-five. You owe me a buck twenty-five. Oh my God. And they're like, no, no way! And like, come on then. And the cop is like, okay. I will pay the money myself <laughs> if you get out of here. <laughs> so, it's really great. His friends came to get him out of jail. Aww. And he show, and he, he turns around, because the both of the deans are trying to get him. And he yeah. looks at the other dean and says, I'll sign for my, I'll go back to my college yeah. with the friends. You know, and he's like, hey, that's so great. So he goes and he talks to his friends, like, thanks for bailing me out, you know. Aww. Um, and they're just like, I'm sorry I was a jerk. And they're like, hey, we're so glad you're here, man. And it's really wonderful. And um, that is exactly halfway through the movie. Oh. <laughs> I'm just really prepared for wrapping up soon. Yeah, me too. Watching it, I always thought, well, that's done, right? No. no. Okay. Um, so, because we still have the encyclopedia competition, which Dexter has agreed to participate in. Next scene. It cracks. He's speed reading encyclopedias. One of his buddies is timing him, and the other like ten people are just watching him raptly. Oh my gosh! Like skipping encyclopedias, <laughs> um, which is pretty great. So he, um, yeah, they Quigley calls him and says, "Okay, so these are the people who are going to be on your panel with you, who are going to help you answer questions. Mm -hmm. They're all really smart." And he says, "Oh, good." Um, can I have my other three buddies on the panel instead? <laughs> so he just stacks, like, three of his friends on the panel, uh -huh. who are not the sharpest tools in the shed. No. In, they don't study. It's just nothing. Yeah. You know, they're not going to answer uh -huh. questions. And he, I, in fact, he tries to give them answers on the panel. <laughs> and they're like, who are the three ancient Greek figures who were sculptors? And he leans over one of them. Okay, you answer this one. He gives them three names with uh -huh. intense things, and they're, they're like, Hypocrit. Hatred? <laughs> and he says, no. No. So he ends up answering all the questions, of course, <laughs> and his buddies are just smiling away. Uh -huh. um, and at one point, 
he gets asked a question and the answer is Applejack. And then he starts glitching. And he's like, Applejack, two, nine, seven. Uh oh. And uh, he get he snaps out of it, but Mr. Arno was watching that and because it was the biggest thing uh -huh. on TV at the time, I'm sure. And he's watching it, and he says, oh, no, this kid knows everything. We have to take him away where people can find out stuff. What? He calls his people. He's like, shut down the Applejack station or whatever. Because what? you know? he's got, the numbers are some sort of code for his, mm -hmm. his hideouts or whatever. So he freaks out, calls everybody, tells them to shut down. Uh, so he says, pick up the kid. We need to put him on ice uh, to his henchman guy. So they Is go. Mean dead? Mm -hmm. So they go, and they get him. Uh, meanwhile, th his friends are worried because he's disappeared. Yeah. And they try, they, they figure it out, actually. It's really inspiring to watch. <laughs> they figure it out, they send one of their buddies to the cops, they, they find him out in the country, wherever the house was, you know, they, they have yeah. it, they get it down. His buddy, so two of them figure it out and they come back and tell the rest of them. And so they have a plan yeah. to rescue him. They have informed the cops of their insight. The cops have done nothing with it yet, but they are looking into it. <laughs> um, so, they're like, we have to get him out. Next day, bright and early, uh, the three other members of the panel are still at the competition, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> Meanwhile, all the rest of his buddies have dressed up like painters. What? <laughs> and are painting desperately horrible colors the house that what? they've stashed what? him in. And they have a fake work order that says they're supposed to do this. So they need a reason to be on the property. Uh -huh. So they're pretending to paint this house. <laughs> this is intense, man. You know? <laughs> um, they call him. They, they send. They make the um, the phone number for their group. The, um, the like, junior common room thing. This is so much more dedicated than, like, anything. Any prank or, like, defense I've heard of. It's amazing. <laughs> so they call the... Uh, the, the guy who's like, is this really a thing? He calls the, the, um, like, hangout room where they hang out, and one of their buddies who's there. Common room? The common room. Then, <laughs> yeah, Lily picks up the phone and he's like, hey, uh, yes, this is the paint company. They have it all sorted out. Mm -hmm. They're, they're brilliant. Uh, so, ultimately, they were gonna kill Dexter that, that morning, but because what? of all the people there, they can't get him out. Yeah. Inconspicuously. So, um, they, they do figure out where he is. He's in a trunk in the upstairs. They go up, they drag him out. It's pretty intense. They accidentally drop him off the roof <gasps> in the trunk, but he's fine. And, um, then they run away with the trunk. It, it's, it's a great scene. Yeah. Tons of children, not children, <laughs> tons of youths jumping Youth. onto the paint truck, dragging, the, and they're just <laughs> driving away. They've conveniently filled all but one of the cars with paint, uh, except for Dexter's car. And, uh, so they, all the bad guys jump in that car. There's a great car chase that involves paint spraying everywhere, <laughs> um, on the road. Uh, they get to the competition, and they finally, they get Dexter out of the thing. He's a little squished, but he'll be fine. Yeah. He hit his head. And, uh, so he's in the competition, mm -hmm. and they ask a question of him, and he starts speaking really slowly. Oh, no. And you realize the computer is starting to die within him because he hit his head while he was in the thing. Um, so he... The computer is dying? Well, the computer is, like, failing. It's malfunctioning. Is he gonna be okay? Uh-huh. He'll be fine. <laughs> so he's really having trouble getting his words out and uh sure enough they um he gets the, the of course his buddies only got 30 points compared to the other like 80 points yeah they were trying they aren't 100 points or something yeah but dexter comes in he wins uh he well he gets them to within 10 points no he gets them above 10 points but then in 10 the point middle, difference uh huh. Okay. Yeah, he has above. He has them above. He's they're winning by ten okay, points. Yeah. He then passes out in the middle of the a question. Oh no! It goes to the other team. They get it right. No. So they're winning. No. Dexter wakes up and they're like, "Okay, last question." It goes to you guys because it's a time yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it goes to you guys. Uh, d d uh, Dexter's team. Um, you know, 
what's such and such a town? It's exactly the middle of something or other. And he says, I don't know. He doesn't know his brain's hurting. And the guy sitting next to him is like, come on, man, you can do it. It's where my uncle lives. You know. It's he starts listing all these things and he's like, <laughs> dude, you know it. <laughs> so, so he gives the name and all his buddies, they get, and they win and it's great. And then the bad guys show up. They get, they chase the kids out. They run out. Then the bad guys run into the cops. The cops are arrested. Closing scene. The cops arrest three bad guys? Correct. I okay. said that incorrectly. <laughs> so, closing scene. It's all the policemen, and they're chatting. Um, and, uh, not the policemen. The professors. Other P word. The professors <laughs> are talking together. And, uh, they're like, the, the professor Quigley says, you know, we should get this really intense machine for the kids. And he says, we don't have the budget. Meanwhile, the children, not the children, the students are all listening outside still. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and, uh, the, the dean says, whenever we gather, they gather. <laughs> he just, he doesn't understand what's going on. Uh, so the kids, they hear it, everything, they turn it off, and he says, we ought to figure out, one of the students goes, we ought to figure out a way to get Mr. Mr. Quigley that machine. And then the student, the rest of them are like, Meh. And they walk away, and uh, one of the characters turns to Dexter and says, "You know, if we ever get one of those machines, Dexter, don't fool around with it, will you?" <laughs> he says, "Okay." And that's the end of the movie. That's kind of sweet. It is kind of fu- it's fun, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's yeah, it was a good movie. There's a really different sense of like group strength. It was the and wildest community. friend group I've ever seen in just such a it yeah you know people say you can't have like more than two friends or whatever close friends and it's yeah. like yeah I mean I believe that but this was such an excellent example of group friendship yeah like more than two people yeah. being a group huh <laughs> I really enjoyed it <laughs> it was really fun yeah I want to watch the movie yeah it's so pleasant yeah it's such a pleasant movie yeah. I like pleasant movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, folks, that's the end of our episode this week. Um, thanks so much for listening. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, which we don't use, <laughs> Facebook, <laughs> and actually, um, we are releasing all of our podcasts on YouTube. This oh yeah, week. this is a big announcement. Over the summer, we're uploading all of our podcasts to YouTube. Um, but What's our YouTube channel called? Oh, Lost in Theaters, of course. Cool. Um, additionally, however, Ruth and I, because of the summer... We have Bigger little, announcement. Yeah, little spare time. We decided to do bonus episodes this summer, which will involve us... So it's hard to talk about... Exclusive to YouTube. Oh, yeah, because they will be. That's, that's the thing. And they'll actually be videos of us, probably. But that's how it's going to okay, be. Okay, but what are they okay, about? Okay, <laughs> so the idea is, when you talk about obscure movies... You talk about them often with respect to classic films or canon, the canon of films, you know? These YouTube videos are about classic films that we have not seen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but they're so that you can talk about the not so classic films. And it's just going to be this summer, in the summer. Maybe, you know, it'll be the summer special. Okay. Ta-da! Yes! I'm excited. I'm excited too. Um, so that will probably come out next week. Um, anyways, thanks so much for listening. Closing song. The computer wore tennis shoes and he had a happy smile. Don't you wanna be the blues and you see a happy mind? I'm getting serious Christmas vibes. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a tune of Christmas tune. It's June though. We can't even have Christmas in July. Oh man. Anyways, <laughs> thanks so much for listening. Bye. Bye.